I know who killed Bunny. Hello you guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rekha. If you haven't been here before, welcome. So today we will be discussing the seventh episode of Hulu's Only Murders in the Building called Flipping the Pieces. Before we get into it, if you are new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button. I am trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of the season and we are very close to 600, so we are making our way there. And once I hit a thousand subscribers, YouTube will start giving me some AdSense for my videos, which would be really helpful. Also, if you haven't watched up until season two, episode seven, then do not watch this video. We are going to be covering all episodes up until this one and clues that have been going on throughout the episode, so I don't want anything to be spoiled for you. Definitely do not watch this if you are not all caught up. If you like these videos, then you should make sure to go follow me on Instagram as well. We have a great time over there. It's more like my daily life, but also feel free to message me any of your theories or who you think the murderer is over there. I love to respond to your messages and chit chat with you guys. And with all of that out of the way, let's get into the video. So the first thing I want to talk about is that this episode is from Mabel's point of view, which is really cool because it's not often that we get an episode that is from one of the trio's point of view views so we are learning more about Mabel and her father which has been like a huge question mark for us we've met her mother last season we know some things about her aunt that's whose apartment she's living in but we knew absolutely nothing about her father so it is exciting to learn more about Mabel we know that part of the reason the episode is called flipping the pieces is because Mabel's dad would have her over on Sundays and they would do puzzles together and they would make the puzzles more tricky by not looking at the picture or flipping the pieces over so that they were just fitting them together based on the shapes. So that is ultimate puzzle level. If you like puzzles like me, then you know that that is extremely difficult. This also seems to connect to Mabel's ability to be like this mystery sleuth, like all of these things tied together. And it seems that she got this from her father, this passion for like solving mysteries and puzzles and putting the pieces together. The next thing I wanna point out that I think is a pretty big clue, if you're like me, you watch TV with captions and sometimes those captions give you not spoilers, but like a little more information. So Mabel is sitting on the floor. She's wearing her gorgeous yellow jumpsuit and we hear this sound in the background and the captions were on and it said fan turning in the background. And it was like this whoosh, whoosh, whoosh sound, like the sound of a fan. And so I know that this might be a stretch, but I also feel like the, this is exactly the kind of thing that the producers do on this show where there's like this little itty bitty clue. So we know that Mabel's actually like dreaming or this isn't real life, but there's this sound of a fan wishing and that makes me think super fans. Super fans, something to do with super fans. But yeah, that was just something that I heard that I was like, is that a fan? Does that mean that like, the fans, the super fans, are the murderer. Don't know, so I just wanted to point that out. I thought it was really fun and hearing that in the background was really interesting. So obviously we figure out that we are at Theo's apartment, which is pretty cool. He's got a really nice place. I don't know why he's always hanging out at his dad's place. His place looks really nice. And Mabel is pretty clear on the fact that she literally doesn't even remember stabbing this man so that's immediately a red flag we're like what's going on why doesn't she remember that she stopped one yesterday so theo shows her the video and there's obviously a tussle going on and this person glitter guy runs off of the subway and up the stairs and mabel definitely looks completely dazed and theo continues on to kind of clear things up and say that this Glitter guy obviously attacked Mabel. He went for her bag, ripped it out of her hands, and in self-defense, she grabbed that knitting needle and like went ham. That's kind of an explanation for why we see her on the subway stabbing someone. It wasn't a bloody Mabel moment where she like lost her mind. She was literally attacked. So the next thing we see, because the episode kind of jumps between Mabel and Theo and Oliver and Charles, is that Detective Williams is back, Detective D. I'm a huge fan of hers, so I'm so glad that she's back in this episode when they said 
that she was in Denver last episode. I was like, oh, is she not going to be in the rest of the season? I really like her. So she's back and she is here to help our trio find the murderer. She's clearly invested in this story. She, I'm pretty sure she doesn't think that they did it. So she's here to help us out. So the next thing, we jump back to Mabel and Theo, and like I said, this man, Glitter Guy, has stolen Mabel's bag, and as he's running away, Theo is standing there, and we see that Glitter Guy drops this security pass for Coney Island. So this person must be working as a security guard and dropped his pass, so Theo picked it up, and he's here to help Mabel out. I love this redemption arc for Theo. Like... I don't think that Theo is a bad guy. I truly think that, I mean, we'll get into it a little bit later, but I think that he truly wants to help Mabel because he feels guilty about his past and the way that it has affected her. And like, okay, I don't want to be ridiculous, but is anyone else shipping Mabel and Theo? Because like after that little interaction, I'm like kind of shipping them. And I know that Mabel's currently with Alice, but Alice is clearly a liar, but I do think that Theo is giving like cute vibes. I don't know, maybe I'm, <laughs> maybe I've just watched the show too much. I don't know what I'm talking about. So anyway, Theo picks up this badge. He takes Mabel home because she's kind of traumatized by the situation. She was clearly in shock. So he literally wrote on this piece of paper, I took you home like a creep. <laughs> like he's very self-aware and sarcastic and funny. So. I'm such a Theo fan. We also hear Oliver talking about the 12 Angry Men, this like show that he produced, but it was 12 Angry Women. And I want to talk about this because anytime that they mention a play or a storyline or whatever, it is like definitely important. So 12 Angry Men, looking it up, is a show. It was a movie. So the storyline for this movie is that this 18 year old kid stabs his father or he is being charged for stabbing his father. They are in court and they're trying to figure out whether he is guilty or not guilty. And it is these 12 jurors who are trying to figure out if this kid should be charged for murder and basically killed himself given the electric chair. So it's kind of a big deal and almost immediately there are witnesses. There's someone who claimed that they heard the father go down and like they heard what happened and there was someone else who I think said that they saw it but that's the basic gist is there are people who are claiming that they are witnesses and that they were there and they saw it or heard it and so it's not looking good for this 18 year old kid. Immediately the court is like you have to basically decide if this person is guilty but if there's any reasonable doubt, any reason to suggest that they might not have done it, any doubt at all in your mind basically, then we can't say that they're guilty. There are 12 jurors, I guess it has to be a unanimous vote, and there is only one juror that votes not guilty. Take a guess for me which juror votes not guilty. Juror number eight. Guys, my number eight theory, like, what is happening? And the story kind of goes that the jurors hop back and forth between saying guilty and not guilty for various reasons between things like, I'm just lazy and I don't want to talk about this anymore to like, oh, I think he really did do it. Oh, actually, I don't think that he did it. And basically it all comes down to one juror, juror number three. And they're like, juror number three, what's going on? We've discussed all this. We, they basically found out that this kid is not guilty, that they're not strong witnesses, that they really didn't see anything. And juror number three ends up breaking down and telling them that he's actually estranged from his son. And so he wants the young boy to be guilty of murdering his father because of his broken relationship with his own son. So there's another time where we're coming through this broken relationship between father and son, Theo and Teddy, Will and Oliver, Charles and his father. So once again, we're having this relationship between father and child that is like not really computing. And so yeah, this is just another example of the number eight popping up again and another basically like metaphorical or like storyline that reflects the one that we are looking at right now. Okay, so moving past this whole other storyline, we also see Theo's handwriting for the first time because he's writing on notes to Mabel in order for them to communicate. And I looked and it doesn't match either of the Tim Kono suicide notes. That's not to say that Theo doesn't write in all caps and look like one of the notes because one of the notes is in all caps, but currently his regular handwriting doesn't match either of the two Tim Kono notes. 
so that is interesting and it kind of redeems Theo even further. He doesn't seem to have been involved with the Tim Kono murder or with Jan. So then Theo and Mabel are talking and, well, talking and signing. They're kind of trying to communicate with each other. And Mabel is like, honestly, Theo, I don't know if I did this because I feel like I'm capable of doing something like that, of stabbing Bunny with my knitting needle. And I can't remember what happened. And because of this, I'm afraid, I'm afraid that I did it. Next, we see the bulletin board in the office when they break in at Coney Island to the security office. We also see that Mabel takes, you know, a bunch of files, well, really Theo takes them, and they're basically bringing them home to see who works here and who Glitter Guy could possibly be and I took a picture of the bulletin board everything is like really blurry so if any of you have a better photo or have deciphered anything on the bulletin board we'll put the photo up anyway but as far as I can tell there was no clear evidence here there are some names written on the calendar or like things written on the calendar but nothing clear enough that I can definitively say it is this or it is that. The next thing we see is that glitter guy is actually at Coney Island. So Mabel's in the bathroom washing her hands and all of a sudden she sees that there's glitter in the sink. Crazy. So she ends up going and kind of sneaking around kind of into the locker room area of this Coney Island. I don't even know where she is. She sneaks into the locker room and she hears some like gurgling and sees bloody rags being thrown away. So we kind of are getting a sense that the glitter guy is there. He has the stab wound and he's kind of like doing first aid on himself. And she ends up hiding in a locker to watch him. And of course, we don't see his face, which is really frustrating, but I think it would kind of be early to figure out who glitter guy is. And then she makes a noise kind of starts stalking towards her, opening locker after locker, and we see his hand and a lot of like pretty clear images of him. So let's talk about taking a closer look at this guy. He seems to be white, pretty tall. His hair seems to be kind of like brownish and short underneath his hat. And he honestly seems, and you can tell me if you think I'm wrong, but he seems like he might be older. Like his hands are not like smooth baby hands. They seem to have like a couple of wrinkles. So I am really, really thinking that glitter guy is Marv. He looks like he's the right build. The next thing we see is Mabel shoving her way out of that locker, knocking glitter guy over, grabbing his backpack, and running out of that room towards Theo. So still, we don't see this person's face as they're falling. I like was stutter stopping it to try and see if you could see the person's face, and they actually cover their face with their hands, like. Ooh, 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 ooh. So no face as far as I could tell in the video, but definitely thinking that the body of the build, it's looking like Marv. So Theo and Mabel are now in the car heading back to the city and she's going through the stuff. She finds this hoodie or something with like a chicken face logo. And I tried to do some research and figure out where this logo was from because they do tend to use real logos in the show. So if anyone has figured out where that chicken face is from, please let me know in the comments down below. I'm so curious. And also we find Mabel's bag again, but of course the matchbook with the fingerprint is not in there. So that's pretty unfortunate. They lost their evidence. The next thing we learn is that Mabel blocks out her memory due to trauma and traumatic events. And so that kind of explains a lot of the reasons why Mabel is not clearly remembering what happened when Bunny was in her apartment, completely does not remember what happened on the subway the day before, and just in general loses her memories. And so we learned that her father actually had stomach cancer when she was seven years old and passed away. And so that is kind of the first time that she flipped over the puzzle pieces to take away the trauma of losing someone so close to her. So now she claims that she has to re-flip those pieces over to remember what happened with Bunny that night. So as Mabel's in the car, she actually remembers what happened that night. And so as she was coming into her apartment, she saw the person with the knife and the face mask on running out of her apartment and she turned to grab the knitting needle only to see that Bunny was stumbling out and already had the knitting needle in her chest. 
So Mabel realizes that she did not stab Bunny at all. It was not her fault. And she remembers this masked figure running out of her apartment. And this is definitely the same person who attacked Bunny in her own apartment because they're wearing the same like dark black gloves up to like their elbows. And they are wearing this basically like full cargo suit. And they're moving pretty quickly, but we really don't get a good look at them. They are very far away. But one thing I do want to point out is that at least in this version of Mabel's memory, or at least as far as we got in this version, we don't hear Bunny say anything. Not 14, not Savage. It's possible that she says it, you know, after this memory, you know, continues on. But yeah, we don't hear her say it. The next thing we see is that Theo has dropped Mabel off at the pickle diner and she kind of runs inside and gives her two besties a hug. So our fave trio is just like hugging it up in the pickle diner, which is so cute. But pretty quickly we see the last clue that Mabel has found in the bag and that is a photo of Charles and Lucy, like on the street as if someone was watching them. So. That's pretty disturbing. And so pretty much immediately Charles is like, oh my gosh, I have to call Lucy. He calls her and unfortunately she is just hanging out in his apartment, which is not the best news considering Glitter Guy might be after them or might be watching them. And then all of a sudden, City Blackout. So I want to connect this back to the Son of Sam killer. One of you commented this down below and I'll put your comment up here. Thank you so much for commenting. The Son of Sam killings happened during a year where there was a New York blackout. And like I mentioned before, there were eight different shootings. And so there's this connection back to the Son of Sam killing spree via this New York blackout that is happening once again. So those are the clues that I found in this episode thus far, seven episodes in, but there are a couple things I want to point out to discuss and here's what I think. Number one, I feel like, so last season we didn't know that Jin was the, I mean like we didn't definitely know that Jin was the killer until episode nine. So I don't think that Glitter Guy is the killer because we have just met him in episode seven and I think that we're probably gonna figure out who it is in episode eight. So I think that Glitter Guy and the murderer are actually two different people, which means that if I'm right and Glitter Guy is Marv, then Marv is not the murderer. It would be interesting, and I kind of talked about this a little bit earlier in the season, if the person who, you know, quote unquote, stole the painting and the person who killed Bunny were two different people. And I'm not sure that they are, but I do think that Glitter Guy is one thing and the killer of Bunny is another thing. The other thing is that the person that Lucy sees in the archive catacombs does not seem to have the same body type or shape as glitter guy so i do think that those are two different people whether or not they're working together or completely separate it would not surprise me if Howard was the murderer and the one who was roaming the arc catacombs and Marv was glitter guy and was doing his like weird creepy old man thing and ended up being stabbed by Mabel. I still am hesitant to let go of this Marv theory and the relationship that he might have with his estranged daughters. This whole like familial relationship theme that's been going on through this season with Charles and his father, Will and Oliver, now Mabel and her father, Theo and Teddy, all these strained relationships like father-son or like father-daughter or father-child relationships. So they seem to be really leading somewhere and I think that like the killer is going to have that kind of strained relationship and that's going to be part of the motive because at this point it's been pushed so heavily that I couldn't imagine there not being some sort of familial relationship and reason that this person would do what they did. So I'm hesitant to let go of the idea that Marv did it to connect with his daughter because I just feel like I could totally see him doing something crazy and outlandish in order to reconnect with this like estranged daughter. For Howard at this point, like he hasn't been in any episodes recently, which is a little bit throwing me off because Jan was in like 
episodes and it was kind of like stuttered throughout the season so she just kept re-popping back up and obviously this is episode seven which means episode eight is next my favorite number as we have been talking about and i truly think that the number eight is important it has something to do with this i'm just wondering if like howard is in it enough to like have an estranged relationship with a son or daughter or like mother or father could bunny be howard's mother somehow because in some of the storylines like the son of sam killer was given up by his mother is it possible that bunny is actually howard's mother and that she gave him up at birth you know for whatever reason and so he came to this building looking for her to find her and connect with her and maybe he has been trying to reconnect with her all this time she has been denying him maybe she wasn't interested or you know maybe he scared her or whatever and finally he just couldn't take it anymore and he snapped like is the painting a red herring was the painting a red herring someone tell me I'm so confused by the painting. At this point, I think I'm going to say that I think the painting is a red herring because it was a big part of the beginning of the season, but we haven't heard a peep about it since. And so I think that the painting going missing and then the um, forgery being dropped in Charles's apartment, yes, I do think it's connected to the murder and to everything else, but I think that it was a mislead to be like, oh, the person murdered Bunny because they wanted the painting. Maybe that wasn't it at all. Maybe Howard is Bunny's estranged son and he's just really upset that his mother gave him up and he came after her. That's my best theory right now. I can't think of anyone else who it could be. Anyway, that's what I have so far. Drop your comments for the theories and things that you think down below. I know I love to hear them. Definitely let me know what you think. If you like this video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, hit the bell notification, all those YouTube things. And I will see you guys in the next video for episode eight of Hulu's Only Murders in the Building. And then we will only have two left after that. So like, we're really getting close and I can't wait to see where this season is going. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye.